So we've talked about getting results from having a low res object so that we can have uh, soft bodies interact uh, appropriately. And then when we go on render time, we can use our displacement map to give us our high res uh, or detailed version of our object. But uh, since we're gonna be getting to volume builder, we're gonna have to have real geometry uh, go into that volume. So we're gonna have to change our tactics a little bit. So let's hit shift F to uh, send him back to the original frame zero here. And I'm gonna turn off my IPR render and let's turn SpongeBob into kind of a foamy material. And again, in the previous video, we covered subdivision surfaces, displacers, and fields, all things that we're gonna be kind of juggling to get the result we want with Volume Builder. So let's get started. Uh, just so we don't get confused, I'm gonna kind of start over with this head. So we're gonna go ahead and delete the soft body out of here, delete the redshift tag, and uh, delete the material off of him. And in fact, let's go ahead and make a new material here. We'll just call this white. I'm gonna drag that onto his head, select it, go in here, the reflection roughness, just make that a little bit more rougher. And for Patrick, we'll hold down Alt and we'll turn him off and we'll just focus in here on SpongeBob. So I guess before we get into displacing this in a different way that creates actual geometry uh, for a head, uh, let's talk about Volume Builder. So Volume Builder, I have my head selected and I want to turn him, his head into foam or fog or whatever you want to turn it, clouds, whatever you want to turn it into. So with his head selected, I'm going to hold down Alt and tap this Volume Builder right here. And that's going to give uh, the head a parent uh, that is Volume Builder. If you want to find that in the menu, it's over here underneath Volume. Uh, normally when we're creating stuff, it's like create generators or deformers or fields, uh, but volumes and MoGraph stuff are over here. So anyway, we've got our head that's going into the Volume Builder. And by default, what that does is kind of voxelize the results. You can see there's big cubes on here. And over here with the Volume Builder selected, you're gonna see there's a voxel size and it's set to 10 centimeters. The smaller you make voxels, the more detailed it'll be because there's gonna be more voxels uh, filling in the volume of the object. And the object that we're using is the head. So that head, low res head, if I turn off the Volume Builder by touching that little checkbox here, you're gonna see all it's taking is this low res garbage geometry. It's not garbage, low res geometry and voxelizing that result. Uh, if we turn this down to say five centimeters, you're gonna see we're gonna get a more detailed version of our crappy low res head. So how do we take this geometry and make it into a more detailed face or maintain some of our face detail while still allowing us to have this low res head so we can use that as our soft body simulation for our foam head. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn our volume builder back on and we have our head here and instead of creating a material to smooth our object, and you know what, let's turn off Volume Builder again. I'm gonna turn on my IPR render. So we have our low res head here, right? Well, we already know you can go in here to head, you can right click and say render tags, redshift object, select redshift object, go to geometry, and turn on override, and then turn on tessellation. And that'll give us a smooth result, but it's happening at render time. Volume Builder needs real geometry happening for it to act on, not something that happens after the fact, on the renderer. Same thing with the material. I can't create a material, for example, and go in here and have a displacement act on it at render time. It needs to be real geometry. So how I'm going to displace geometry so that it's real geometry is just how we did it with the water in the previous video. So I'm gonna go in here to just long click in here and then choose displacer. I'm gonna take this displacer, I'm gonna drag it to volume builder and just uh, parent it here. In fact, I'm gonna move the head up above the displacer. So we have head, and then we're gonna displace this head. Problem is, this head doesn't have any real geometry. And again, I can't use tricks at render time. It has to be real geometry that I'm gonna displace with our head geo sitting here. So how do I get more geometry? More, I'm gonna get more real geometry. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here to the head, hold down Alt and click subdivision surface. So now I'm, I have my head geometry, I'm subdividing that head geometry in this case twice, and then I can have this displacer acting on that subdivided surface. So it may seem complicated, but it's pretty easy. The head is low res. I'm subdividing that head up to get more geometry. And then on that more geometry, I'm gonna displace something through it. Uh, what I'm gonna displace through it is over here under shading. Now, normally when we're in shading, we're in here and we're like, hey, give us a noise. And you know, we're gonna go in here to our noise and change these noise parameters and displace it like that, like we do with the water. Um, in this instance, what I'm gonna do, if I go up one, instead of shading uh, noise, I'm gonna go in here to shader, uh, bitmaps, and I'm gonna choose my uh, dis displacement map. So instead of noise, I'm gonna use a displacement map 
to displace actual geometry. Uh, now, if this isn't in here, the reason it's in here is because when I deleted the material off of my head, it still stayed in here. It's still available to me uh, in my project. If it's not, you can just go in here and say, load image, and then wherever you have that image, just go ahead and grab it. Uh, but in our case, again, I go in here to shading instead of noise, I'm going to say bitmaps, and we're going to plug in our displacement map. Now, if I just go in here to our displacer, uh, to the object level, and then we say height, so we can dial in the height, it actually shrinks it and then dial back the height and then inflates it, it kind of just, it's not giving me what I want. What I need to do is, uh, again, just like when we were in the water, instead of intensity centered, which is what we did with the water, I'm going to change it just to intensity, and then I'm going to crank this height up until it starts grabbing my face details. And if it's not grabbing enough detail, that probably means there's not enough geometry. So I'm going to go back up to my subdivision surface and we're going to grab that slider and we're going to push those over to three. So now we're getting our displacement map acting on our subdivided head geometry and giving us this end result. Now again, you can go in here and you can dial in the height to be, you know, more or less the results you're looking for. Uh, I think this will work fine. So if we go in here and turn back on our volume builder, everything's going to disappear because we don't have a material on our volume builder. Uh, volume builders require a specific type of material in order to show up in Redshift appropriately. So let's fix that. Uh, because if I click on our render settings here, we're in the Redshift renderer, which means if I go in here to the window material manager, which is open right here in the middle, and I long click on this add, we can go here to materials and that will add a Redshift volume material. So if I drag that Redshift volume material, over to our volume builder, uh, it's still not going to show up. If you click on volume builder, you're going to see we have that sign distance field still on. I just wanted to explain voxelization and what it was voxelizing. Uh, change that from sign distance field over here to fog, and then go back to your RS volume material. And in here, you're going to see there's volume settings. Uh, and this is where your scatter and absorption settings are. But underneath scatter, there's a channel. And this scatter needs to know what volume builder you would like to use. So over here under the presets button, go down to volume builders and choose volume builder. I know it's cut off, but I'll insert an image there. And this is important. If I change this volume builder name to like Bob volume, uh, it's going to disappear again. I got to go back into the material, go in here under presets, volume builders. And when it says volume builder, that's not a generic use any volume builder. That's specifically use Bob volume and then it'll show up. Now, one thing I'm noticing is if I turn off my subdivision surface, or if I turn off my uh, volume here, I am getting this result, but this displacer needs to be on the same level of the head. So I'm going to make that a child of the subdivision surface, and the displacer needs to act on the head. So I'm going to stack them like this. So we've got our subdivision surface, we've got our head geometry and our displacer underneath it, and then when I turn my bob volume back on, now our volume is acting on real geometry, and that happens to be his head. Now again, we're getting kind of a boxy result. So I'm going to go up here to Bob volume here, change this from five centimeters down to one. And now we're getting a, a little bit more refined result. Now let's talk a little bit more about volume builder because it's, it's so many cool things you can do with this. Uh, in fact, you can act on multiple objects. So if I go in here to say create mesh primitive cube, we can take this cube and I'm just going to kind of push it into the corner of this head here. And if I make this cube a child of Bob volume, and again, that's just me taking the cube, dragging it until I get the little down arrow. Now it is part of this fog volume. So you're going to see that cube is fog and that head is fog. So if I go back to my Bob volume, you're going to see we have a subdivision surface, which contains my head and the displacement, uh, as well as a cube. And I can set this cube to something other than normal. I can set it to uh, subtract, and that will go ahead and cut that cube out of my head here. Now, with that cube selected inside of the volume builder, it has other options. If you go ahead and select the cube, those are the cube options. If you're in the volume builder and you go and select cube, uh, you can go over here. You can change, for example, the inside voxel fall off. If you change this up to like 10, you're going to see the interaction between these two objects is a, a little bit softer. And in fact, let me bring this up. I brought this up in earlier videos, but I'll repeat it here. Uh, the Volume Foam Material in Redshift by Igo by Zach. Uh, definitely go check that, this out. He'll go, he does a deep dive into a bunch of uh, other options. Uh, but very, very awesome tutorial. But anyway, uh, we're, we have the volume, Bob volume or the volume builder uh, selected. And then we have all the properties in here. And if you click this here where it says Fog Smooth and you long click, you're going to see there's a lot of options in here. So we'll go ahead and click Fog Smooth. 
and that's going to add it to our stack. If we want to change any of these, if we only want to apply our fog smooth to our subdivision surface, if we drag it underneath our cube, it'll leave our cube alone. Uh, we can drag it to the top and it'll apply it to both. And just like you would expect, fog smooth, uh, you have strength and then you have voxel distance and iterations. Uh, so this is the amount, you know, if you can say voxel distance of five will give us a very smooth result. And then how many times it's going to smooth over and over, we'll hit that five and then it'll give us, again, just a softer and softer result. So if you really want to soften your results, feel free. And there's other uh, operator types. And then of course the strength or the amount of that smooth result here, you can go ahead and dial that up or down. In our case, I guess we'll just keep that at one. Yeah, maybe two. And also in here, let's go ahead and long click this. We'll do fog multiply. That's gonna put a multiply at the very top. So it's gonna act on everything below it. Right now the multiply is set to one. Let's go ahead and set that to zero and that's gonna make everything disappear because right now I think the default value is black. So when you multiply black on something, it's going to just make everything disappear. However, if we go in here to fields, and we talked about fields earlier, if you long click this linear field, you're gonna have a whole bunch of field options. And instead of doing like a spherical field when we were trying to dictate where our rippling water was going, this time we're gonna do a shader field. So now again, in our Bob volume, we have fog multiply and in that fog multiply, we have a shader field. Uh, if I choose fog smooth, it disappears. There's no shader field as associated with that uh, fog smooth. However, fog multiply does. So again, if you wanna access these properties, it's all in this uh, volume builder node or object. Uh, so again, with fog multiply selected, we're in the field section. If you wanna go back to filter, that's gonna be like the strength or in the case of smooth, you know, your voxel distance iterations. But if we have fog multiply and field selected, that's going to be our shader field. And then if we want to say, hey, uh, the shader field, what do you want it to be? Do you want it to be a bitmap like we were using earlier? Do you want it to be a gradient? In our case, we want it to be noise. So I'm gonna click noise. And that's just gonna be, you know, regular noise, but we know we have a lot more cool noise options available to us. I'm gonna scroll down and we can go in here and click on the noise swatch, and here we're in noise. We're already familiar with this from the last video. So again, I'm gonna move this up so we can see our noise, and then as we change parameters, how it's updating our noise. Uh, so again, if I go in here to contrast, that's going to give me more contrast between my lights and my darks, and you can see it's gonna start poking holes into our object here. And in fact, uh, you know, feel free to change your noise. We'll change it to like Voronoi. It's giving us a nice bubbly look. And uh, I guess now is a good a time as any uh, to talk about our actual uh, RS volume material. So we've assigned the RS volume material to our volume builder. And you know, what? I should probably change this back just in case anybody's getting confused. Now again, if we change the name of the volume builder, you gotta go back to the material, presets, volume builders, choose volume builder so it knows what to draw. 